The second point uh, we want to discuss today is the problem, the need for more evidence-based insurance medicines. And to make a graphic description of the problem, I would like to use this comic uh, the, um, made by one of our ex-members, Bert Cornelius. Um, this comic was also used on our first SIM newsletter in 2015. And in this comic, basically, there is a patient applying for some disability benefits, and she is asking the doctor, so doctor, what are my chances to ever getting back to work? And the doctor quickly looked through the papers, articles, trying to find out for some evidence, and the doctor says, ah, oh, yes, well, good question, all right, uh, let me see, ah, uh, and at the end, there is no evidence to answer these questions that usually insurance medicine professionals face. Insurance medicine also has some other peculiarities that I would like to highlight, specifically in three areas, which are the production and access of evidence, the workforce, and the social and security systems. In, the te in terms of production and access to evidence, insurance medicine experts often lack sufficient evidence for making medical assessments. As our director, Regina Kunz, will always say, insurance medicine professionals lack pr approximately 30 years behind in terms of available evidence in comparison to other medical areas. Scientific evidence uh, relevant for insurance medicine is generally produced um, by multiple health areas and disciplines, making it scattered and thus difficult to identify and access. Very importantly, currently there is no international insurance medicine journal that could channel all the evidence and could facilitate the access to evidence for the insurance medicine professionals. In terms of workforce, the insurance medicine, medical assessments are performed by a diverse range from, from health professionals. This is a little bit different than other, the other um, stakeholders that, that usually other Cochrane groups have. They, they are more specific. For us, we need to reach different professionals such as psychiatrists, orthopedists, rehabilitation specialists, occupational health physicians, managers, and all of them on top have different levels of training in insurance medicine according to different countries. In some countries, it is required that they have a proper specialization in insurance medicine, whilst in other countries, they just are required to have some kind of an, an informal or not formal training in insurance medicine. In terms of social security systems, uh, I need to say, or I would like to highlight that uh, the practice insurance medicines and tax are determined to a great extent by the national regulations. And this is a common argument when you are trying to advocate for evidence because they say that the evidence uh, doesn't work, it works only for specific contexts. Based on the um, results of their survey, we to some extent think yes, but also no, because there are some similarities in different, in, in different countries. We will see that in the results of the insurance in the survey. And most importantly, the lack of evidence in insurance medicine has relevant implications in terms of the reliability, the fairness and equity of medical assessments, as well as the efficient use of financial resources in social security systems. I would like to show in the two, in the next two slides, um, some evidence for that. So this slide here, shows the number of working age population or a percentage of working age population receiving disability benefits in selected countries. And what you can see or what the experts in the area say is that in the last 20 years, the number of, of individuals receiving disability pay, uh, benefits have been increasing in most of the industrialized countries. Of course, this is a big challenge in terms, as I say, before, said before, of sustainability and efficient use of financial resources in social and, secur social and security systems. Additionally, I mentioned that there is a lack of evidence in, in the insurance medicine, and I would like to show a little bit evidence on it. This was a systematic review that was conducted by authors, most of, of them are members of Cochrane Insurance Medicine. This systematic review was published in 2017 in the BMJ, and basically the objective of the systematic review was to explore to which degree there is an agreement between different raters of cases with disability. For, for instance, uh, somebody with, with uh, chronic depression that cannot work, 
they go to a insurance medicine professional or expert to assess their case. They compare different insurance medicine professionals and they compare how they rated the same case. The striking results of the systematic review showed that medical experts reach only low to moderate responsibility in the judgment of work capacity to work. What does it mean? For a case, for instance, of someone that cannot work because of back pain, one doctor said that the capacity of work of this patient could be 90%, whilst the other could be say that his capacity of work is 10%. It's just to make an example, but just to show you that there is a big uh, disagreement in the assessment of cases. And the authors uh, just uh, mentioned or highlighted that these findings are disconcerting and call for substantial investment to improve the assessment of, of disability. 